Alright, so this is Chris here live. We're at the retirees rally. The anti DC 37 Henry Garrido, anti Henry Garrido rally featuring NYC retirees. So you see a Mel Melanie right here, the president of NYC retirees. She's here right now. They better go live going live because it's raining out and I don't want to record it. So. Oh, sorry, so see here, we're alive. <laughs> see a lot of people here, a lot of retirees are here. They are pissed off at DC 37, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yo. Sorry, don't worry about it. Okay, what's up? Hi, Nelly. Can you hear me? Yes, I have to. I can't hear you. Hold on, I need to move away from these so people to hear. This is this is Yeah, let me see something. Yeah. We're going live. We're live right here. I'm just going to go live. So who's coming, Vicky? So who's coming, Vicky Palladino? If you come out. And that's it, only Vicky? Is. Right now? Yeah. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Oh, I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for Where's your green stuff? Where's your green stuff? Give me anything. All of that stuff that I'm going to spend. You are here. Out of the event, you're here. That's what you're going to do. He made you get the so I want to do this. I want to do. I don't see. 
For DC 37 retirees, yes. could you kind of clip? I need you to come up a little bit closer, like this way behind here. If you're DC 37, yeah, push back just a little bit, guys. We need a little bit of room. <laughs> Take a few steps back, and I need DC 37 retirees right behind us. Put the hat on. Okay, come over. I need you. Yeah, Ari Kagan right there. What's up, Ari? What's up, man? Come over here. Get in the front, Let me get in here. Yeah. Hey, I'm doing well. Doing good work. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. God is on our side. I hope so. Um, so do you want to do Facebook Live? No, I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine for the crowd. Do you want to uh, do you, do you want to uh, find this and just pop up the camera and make sure you're just being? Okay, so I'll do it. Um, either way, however you want to do it. I don't have any other time. I can do it right. I can do it right here. Okay. And then, so it'll be you. I'll do you, me. We'll let the council speak. Then we'll let all of our guests speak. And then we'll wrap it up. And then we'll do any, any if anyone's here to ask us questions, we'll take questions. Is that good? Okay. Are you ready? Okay, so give me a minute. Sure, sure. Are you ready? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start this and give it to you. And of course, someone would want to call me as soon as I'm starting. Hey everyone, we are at City Hall today to do our press conference that we called yesterday. You can tell we have a very good crowd today. We are going to start. I'm going to pass the phone to Michelle, and then um, I will speak. Michelle will speak. Um, the council persons that are here will speak, and then we are going to allow our retirees that, that have shown up to, with prepared statements to make their statements to the press. So, hold on. Okay. 
You ready? Yeah. I know, I'm dropping everything everywhere. I have a key. It's going to fall. Yes, please, thank you. Okay, now let me get me organized. <laughs> Since my words are all wet. Take a couple steps back. back. We're real crowded by the camera. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so, thank you everyone for coming last minute. I know we kind of sprung this on you, but after the, the recent events of the last several days became very disturbing to us, we wanted to be able to get together and set the record straight since no one asked us for our side of the story. Yes! So, <laughs> thank you for coming. I am Mary Ann Pizzatola. I am accompanied today. Thank you. I am accompanied by members of all different unions from all different agencies from all over the city of New York that are retirees from the city of New York. We are the New York City Organization of Public Service Retirees. We called this press conference today to condemn our former unions and stand up for the brave council persons that introduced legislation, intro 1099, that would protect a retiree's access to traditional federal Medicare. Yeah! On June 22nd, Councilman Barron, Shulman, Vernikov, Paladino, Ariola, Lee, Marte, Hanif, Krishnan, Kagan, Aviles, Richardson Jordan, and introduced a two sentence legislation that would protect us. Those two sentences, the first one requires the city of New York to provide a Medigap plan for our traditional Medicare. And the second sentence, the second sentence specifically states that this bill does not prevent any of our unions from collectively bargaining their benefits. On the same day, Assemblyman Ken Zembrowski it advised us that he is introducing legislation in New York State to yeah. all state yeah. which would protect all state workers. The Daily News on New York, the Daily News reported that our former union leader, DC 37's Henry Garrido, threatened, yeah. threatened to withdraw support and donations to any elected official who supported our legislation, not because of the merits of the bill but because our unions made a deal with the devil, and that was to trade away our Medicare benefits for their own enrichment. Oh, yeah. Mr. Garrido. Oh, yeah. Mr. Shame, 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 Mr. Garrido then went on New York in Inside City Hall with Errol Lewis to misrepresent and distort his actions to misrepresent the facts of this case without any fact checking from us or input from us. We wouldn't have needed intro 1099 if our own union protected us like they were supposed to. How are you? How are you? Shame, shame, shame. Mr. Garrido then doubled down to defend his actions and went on New York One with Errol Lewis, an anti-union media outlet, on a segment funded by Aetna, a non-union insurer. A non-union insurer with a history of insuring the lives of slaves and is under investigation by the DOJ for Medicare fraud and to justify his actions of selling off retiree health care and putting us into a Medicare Advantage plan, privatizing Medicare. Shame. Mr. Garrido then smeared Mr. Barron, Councilman Barron, and these fine council members supporting the intro to defend the one benefit that retirees relied upon, Medicare. Joshua Freeman is a labor historian and an author, and he described Medicare as the single most important benefit that our unions helped create. That's right. And DC 37 is the largest union in the city of New York, the lowest paid workers and pensioners, and many of us living on the edge of poverty. We took jobs in the public sector because these jobs had the promise of pension, and health care, including Medicare. Promises made, promises kept. 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 Joshua said, and now you can have it. And I quote, and now you can have it, or maybe you'll have to pay for it. People get really upset, he said. 
I thought I had a deal, and now suddenly the city and maybe our own union leaders uh, are saying that we would have to pay for it. Oops. <laughs> I am missing a page. Hold on. Paid for it. <laughs> they're all stuck together. <laughs> and now they're telling me, no, I don't have this deal anymore, and I now have a different deal. We earned and paid for our health care benefits. And now we are sold off like cattle by our own former unions to enrich themselves. And that's why we needed intro 1099 and the city council to help us. Our unions were supposed to be about unity. Instead, they are about division. They are dividing themselves within the MLC, pitting one union against each other, and then pitting themselves against retired workers. Unfortunately, in the MLC, they have not only divided the unions and the retirees, but they did so to favor single union interests and bullied all of us to get what they wanted, something that real labor leaders would never have done. Retirees are not in unions. We do not collectively bargain, and we do not vote on union leaders or on their contracts. And this is why we have the city council to protect us, like they always did, from greedy mayors except this time they are also protecting us from our former unions. The one thing that he did talk about in the articles that came out over the weekend was that they needed to do this to finance the health insurance stabilization fund and I want to make this crystal clear. That health insurance stabilization fund was set up for one reason and one reason only and that fund was to provide for premium for active workers and under 65 retirees, not Medicare eligible retirees, our seniors and our disabled, the most vulnerable populations that we have. That fund will only provide a benefit to a retiree if they have a union and if they have a welfare fund would provide them a vision prescription and dental plan. That is it. That fund has been misused and we have been saying this for years. It has been misused by our former unions and the city of New York for enrichment. One billion dollars was taken out of that health fund in 2014 to finance the teacher's contract and collective bargaining. The city has taken money out of that fund also to use for budget shortfalls. And now they want to say they have to do this to us because they misused money and they've done this for years. With that, I am going to have Michelle a. Robbins, our secretary of our organization, speak. And then we will ask the council persons that are here to make a comment and then we want our retirees from DC 37, as well as John um, from Sanitation, <laughs> thank you, to make their statements, and then we'll be glad to take any questions. Michelle. Beautiful. Yeah. 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 Let's go, Michelle. Let's go, Michelle. What do we want? What do we want? What do we want? Now. There he is. Oh. Like a bull in a china shop. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll be the mic stand. You go first. Okay. Sorry. Eleven. Right. Right. I'm sorry. Eleven. I am Michelle Robbins. I am the secretary of the New York Organization of Public Service Retirees. So the Daily News and the Post articles that came out this this weekend were disgusting. Those. Newspapers who claim we are tiny and no longer call the Big Apple their home should be ashamed. Shame on them. Shame! 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 Lost my place. We are strong in numbers. And don't be fooled that the majority of, the, of those retirees live here in the Big Apple and vote. And once a New Yorker, always a New Yorker. Yes. Just because we move away doesn't mean we should be dismissed like garbage. Okay? We are not naysayers. And we just did not get Councilman Barron to introduce Bill 1099. He was passionate and he believed. He was doing the right thing. Yes. 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 And someone had to do the right thing. And Councilman Barron and these councilmen here and everybody else who's going to sign on to this bill and pass it are doing the right thing for these retirees that built, rebuilt, and built this city. I'm dying for this city. Yeah. Yeah.
The newspaper the needs right to check page. their facts. Check the facts. Okay, and that is it. And again, that stabilization fund and all that money that they claim that our benefits are, are bankrupting this city, I don't think so. They need to do their math. That is all. <laughs> all right, Mr. that the health insurance stabilization fund doesn't have money in it any longer to pay for our health care. But since 1967, when Mayor John Lindsay gave us health Medicare, that our health care plan was paid for by the city budget. That stabilization fund does not pay for us. What the Mr. Garrido did not want to tell you on New York One was that our money was reallocated to him by a deal that the unions made with the city. That money is still there. It should be earmarked for us like it was in the first place and not transferred to pay for someone else. That's the truth. With that, tell the truth. 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 And since 2014, they had an opportunity to come up with a plan for themselves to try to fix that issue with the stabilization fund, and they, did, and not. they did not. So they figured the easy way out, throw us into Medicare Advantage, quick money, and have a nice day. Yep. And there you go. Spell your name, please. Michelle R O P B I N S. Michelle Standard Spelling, right? M I C H E double L E. Thank you. What do we do? Stand your legs. When the Tyrese rights are under attack, what do we do? Stand your legs. When the Tyrese rights are under attack, what do we do? When the Tyrese rights are under attack, what do we do? Fight back. Fight back. This is Councilman Kagan. He is one of our supporters. So I'm Councilman Ari Keegan, proudly representing 47th Council District in Southern Brooklyn. Yeah! I'm New York City Councilman, so I work for the entire city of New York. Yes, I would like to say this is a moral issue. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of people who dedicated decades of their life serving New York City. Yes! And what do we get now? Oh, like we don't have money for you, we have money for someone else. If you live outside of the country, then we have money for you. Yes. We just voted two weeks ago for another unconditional cash payments for people who are with limited income and don't work, but for people who work for 40 years for New York City as firefighters, as police officers, as teachers, and so on. We don't have any money. No money. It should be unconditional preservation of all health care benefits to our amazing New York City municipal retirees who made our city stronger and better for decades. Yes. 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 Unconditional, not cash payments for people who did not work or do not work, for people who worked for decades to make our city better. Also. I do not believe any of these excuses. It's all bogus excuses and also unbelievable, unfair, totally wrong, disgusting threats. Oh, I'm union boss, so I'm all, I own New York City Council. I own New York City. Don't, don't tell us otherwise. What kind of union leader is this? You need to listen to people of New York City. They did not even inform union members before they made this deal. Everybody learned it from other sources. That's despicable. Shame! I'm shame! Saying... Shame! 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 I'm saying today that we will win this fight. This fight we will win. Because this is the right thing to do. Because it's the right thing to do. And it's not quarter of million people, by the way, quarter of million people is something, huh? 250,000, but it's much more, I always say, what about families, what about neighbors, what about everyone who supports us? We're talking about millions of people, millions of people. What do we want? Medicare. When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Medicare! When do we want it? Now! And by the way, it should be a bipartisan issue. Last time I checked, Democrats always talking about how important Medicare is. 
They don't want any kind of privatization. What about retirees? Oh, we're not going to talk about it. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm shocked that New York City, Speaker of New York City Council and Chair of the Finance Committee do not even mention this issue shame anywhere them. in budget shame, negotiations. Shame, 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 shame. How, how come? Do you exist? Are we exist in this world? What is it? Is it word retirees is no longer like part of the vocabulary? What is it? You know, so, so we can find money for this. Oh, what about money for this? What about money for this? But in New York City, people who pay taxes, by the way, people who pay taxes and who did not work for millions of dollars, it was very limited. They like to talk about limited income. For well, right now, on fixed limited income, why not to take care of us? You, why not to care of you? I'm saying us because I feel like I'm part of the family. So we will win this battle. Litigation, legislation, and motivation. from being able to take away your Medicaid, Woo! Medicare, Medicare, Medicaid, they'll give you five. That's another That's another story. <laughs> But what we want you to know is we're fighting it in the city council, we're fighting it in the courts, and we're with you. We're in discussions with Marianne at all times. We believe that you made a promise and that promise should be kept. You paid into what you have, were supposed to get. You Thank collectively you. bargained for this. Yes. And unions should not then bully you into giving it up. Yeah. Well, and I want to take a moment to commend many of the, the people who are on this bill, including council members Kagan, Palladino, and myself, who are Democrats, who were threatened, and stayed on the bill anyway. Congratulations. Everybody, how are you? Yes. Good afternoon and thank you for coming. And to just reiterate what has been said again and again, we have been with you from the from the beginning. This is your money. This is your money. You worked hard for it, okay? You are to get it back. This is what you earned. This is what you want. How dare they slap this at you now? And they keep changing it like a pendulum on a clock. No, the bill is now there. We have supported you from the beginning. We will continue to support you straight on through. I'm finally happy that it's on the floor that Baron brought it on. He had the guts to bring it on. We all had it, but you know what? This is different. You're going to make out with this one. I give you my word. Uh, this is a bipartisan issue. It is. Okay, so let's move forward. Just don't stop this train because what they're looking to do is slow you down, pump the brakes. No, just keep going through. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Human right, not a political fight, and we are not going to allow it to become a political fight or our unions to bully those that are trying to—they're trying to intimidate the council.